It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Embarking on the second hour, you're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is July 21st, 2011. I'm James Burns, your host, along with Adam, my network producer, man the helm back at the AFR HQ in Austin, Texas. I'm coming at you live from Shreveport, Louisiana, and according to the top of the Drudge Report, it's uh, really, really hot in the States right now. I mean, there's uh, triple digits all over the country. Uh, some people are lucky enough to be in the uh, lower to upper 80s right now. And um, to paraphrase uh, from uh, one of my favorite scenes in uh, Monty Python's Life of Brian, for all you that are experiencing um, temperatures in the 80s, you lucky bastards. Uh, but this is actually kind of a sad day in my opinion. I mean, today was officially the uh, last day of the uh, space shuttle program. Atlantis uh, landed this morning, the last space shuttle in service to NASA, and it, it marks an end of, uh, well, a lot of people's hopes and dreams for not only uh, the United States, but for humanity in general. I mean, I'm a big sci-fi geek, and I was a big Star Trek fan. I believed in all that stuff, you know, the idea of our, our greatest achievements would be the moment we learn to get along with each other and stop fighting and killing each other and reach for the stars. Then all this other crap happened. 9-11, the wars, the police state, and it kind of shattered my dreams and opinion. This is kind of like the final nail in the coffin, in my opinion. I mean, the day before, um, yesterday, was what the I think the 42nd anniversary of the uh, moonwalking. And now some people believe that it happened. Some people believe it didn't happen. I wasn't there, and I, I go back and forth on whether or not we actually landed on the moon, because it really, to be honest, it doesn't make much sense, does it? I mean, in the late 60s and in the 70s, we were landing on the moon, yet, what, 30, 40 years later, we've kind of gone backwards. I mean, at one time, we were reaching for the stars, you know, our hopes and our ambitions and our dreams we were reaching out there slowly but surely. We were we were making, you know, steps towards becoming a spacefaring race one day. But it really just feels like what happened today with the end of the space shuttle program. It signifies the end of of more than just uh, basically NASA and more uh, than just the space shuttle error. It also signifies perhaps we as a people turning our backs on the stars, turning our backs on these hopes and dreams that we all once had. And it, it really does feel like we are heading towards a new dark ages. I mean, not just with the fact that the space shuttle program is coming to an end. I realize that you also, it's not completely over because the Russians are still going up into space. And I guess they're going to let us, uh, send our astronauts up there with them on the Soyuz capsules. I mean, I don't know how long that's going to last, to be honest. <laughs> it's just, it is sad. It is sad to see this, you know, come to pass. But everything else seems to tie into it as well. The police state here, the erosion of our freedoms and liberties, the shredding of the Constitution, the expansion of government, the, the mountain of debt, the unconstitutional wars, un occupations, the bombings. I mean, if we were to spend this kind of money that we spend on the military industrial complex, I would have much rather that money gone towards the space program, towards hiring people for space exploration, towards building more space stations, uh, colonizing the moon, heading out towards Mars and the rest of the, uh, the uh, star system that we live in. That's what I'd rather the money go towards, because at least that would hire people for you know, good work. And yeah, it's risky work because as we all know from the past couple years of uh, space, some people didn't come back. Some people lost their lives in this endeavor to voyage into the final frontier. And there's risk in everything. I mean, look at, look at people that decide to climb out of the trees or 
or walk out of caves or wherever the hell we came from. I don't know where, to be honest. But those that decide to, to leave their... Uh, they, they say that we, as a species, originate off the continent of Africa. Maybe that's true. I don't know. But if that's the case, I mean, it took a lot of risk for some of the tribes to walk across unknown country uh, with unknown dangers and predators to brave the unknown to go across water. I mean, you've had that going on for a while now. Men who built boats and ships, never knowing if, if they were going to make it to the other side of the lake, of the river, or the ocean. And a lot of people didn't make it on that voyage, whether it was on foot, on boat, by plane, or up into space. I mean, we've had you know, tragedies left and right in space. I mean, with the, uh, the Challenger disaster back in the 80s and a couple of years ago with the uh, Columbia disaster. But that's just par for the course. If we're not willing to take risks, if we're not willing to brave the unknown and exercise our, our pioneering spirit, which is something that I think is a good quality that we have as a species, I mean, we might as well just curl up in a ball and just start sucking our thumbs. And like I said, I would much rather us have this huge, massive space program where we're building up, heading out into space, exploring the cosmos, than bombing and killing our fellow man and invading their countries. And it's just sad that that's the direction that we've gone as a people. We've turned inward. We, we've, we've fallen so far from our hopes and ambitions in 1969. I mean, yeah, there was problems back then. You had the Civil Rights Movement. You had uh, uh, Vietnam. You had the Cold War. You had all that. But the idea that we could go and reach for the stars and, and with our own ambition and risk and trial and error and get out there and land on the moon, if that actually happened, and there's a part of me that wants to believe we actually did it because we did it several times. Now, it would have been one thing if we would have landed on the moon once and it never went back, but we've done it over and over again, according to NASA, according to you know the government. And I guess in that regard, I do want to believe that we actually went to the moon. So I, I guess that's where I am in that, in that place. Now, I've seen you know, plenty of documentaries that try to make the case that we didn't go to the moon, and, and you never know. I mean, it remains to be seen. But like I said a moment ago, I do find it very questionable that despite the fact that we have advanced technologically, uh, you know, leaps and bounds from the late 60s and early 70s to where you think it would be way easier for us to get to the moon and, you know, colonize it, set up some bases, and eventually head out to Mars. Why aren't we? That, that's, that's the big question. Why haven't we? Why, why have we gotten to this point where we seem to be tumbling and falling backwards on ourselves? I mean, it's just, it's just sad because... I mean, it, there's a lot of hope there, a lot of real hope by reaching out there beyond our safe zone, our comfort zone, what we're used to, and braving the unknown once again. Now, I recognize the fact that in our uh, pioneering quest, we have done some pretty um, terrible things along the way. I mean, look at what happened to the Native Americans in our, our quest for manifest destiny. Yeah. You know, we have to learn from the past. We have to look at the good things we did, our ancestors did, and we also have to recognize the bad things, like with what happened to Native Americans during our, our pioneering quest across the ocean and across the continent of the United States. Yeah, that was terrible. That was wrong what happened. But we can't go back in time and fix it. The only thing we can do is learn from our mistakes, to learn from the mistakes of what was done to Native Americans, learn from the mistakes of slavery. Unfortunately, we still have slavery. And, and learn from the mistakes that we've made in recent years of all these atrocities and wars and occupations. We have to learn from the things that we've done wrong in order to move ahead as a species. And I always saw space as that opportunity for us to 
step forward into the light further and into becoming the, the people that we're, we're meant to become, to grow up as a species. But it just really feels like with the end of the uh, space shuttle program and the fact that it looks like that they're, they're probably not, it just, it feels like we're just falling backwards, not forwards. And it's at many levels. I mean, we've, we've, we've tumbled so far. And, you know, the economic situation is getting worse. We're $14 trillion in debt. It looks like they're about to uh, compromise and raise the debt ceiling again. And chances are they're probably also going to raise our taxes. Uh, there was talk uh, circulating around the Capitol. Uh, I talked about this yesterday. Something I've been you know, theorizing, my prediction, is that not only are they going to raise the debt ceiling, they're also going to raise their taxes. And it looks like they want to raise revenue by at least a trillion dollars. And you know what that means? more money out of your pocket. So people are suffering bad enough already. Barely able to pay the mortgage, the car note, the the bills for groceries, utilities, and they're just going to lay it on us even harder. Meanwhile, it looks like they're gearing up for more war, whether it's uh, going into Libya for a, a full ground force invasion or this rumor circulating right now, and it's, this happens almost every time this year, of the possibility of conflict with Iran. I mean, that's been going on for what a couple of years now. The uh, <laughs> the uh, the war drums beating. So I, I don't know what's going to happen, but it does seem pretty disturbing that they're so invested with this "quote unquote" humanitarian effort, which has taken the lives of what at least a thousand plus citizens, innocent civilians in Libya, and it has nothing to do with protecting the people there it has nothing to do with liberating them and has nothing to do with giving them a potentially better life it's about what the powers that be can get their grubby hands on and what does libya have well they have oil they have these fresh water reservoirs and that's one of the most important resources on the planet is fresh water that and before that of obviously oxygen oxygen fresh water food, land. So they're after the oil. They're after the fresh water in Libya. And, of course, they're also after uh, Gaddafi's tons of gold. And that's, that's where we're heading, to potentially a third world war scenario, whether it's going to be uh, a ground invasion of Libya or a conflict with Iran or all this stuff combined. And that's kind of my fear is that technically I think if, in uh, years from now, decades from now, when the, the history books are written, if there's any of us left after a third world war, I, I fear that with what's been happening the past 10 years, with our invasions and bombings and occupations of these countries in the Middle East, is going to be where the third world war officially starts, according to historians in the future. When we went into Afghanistan, when we, 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 when we went into Iraq, when we started bombing Pakistan with CIA drones and bombing Libya, and now I think we're also bombing Yemen now. And who knows who else we're bombing? And I think all this is tying in together towards a global conflict, and that's exactly what the powers that be want. They don't want us to reach for the stars. They don't want us to have these ambitions and hopes and dreams. See, if they wanted to, the powers that be, they could use their mass amount of wealth and influence to actually do some good for humanity. They could actually do some good. But they don't do good. They don't have any intention of doing good for any of us. They're in it for themselves. If they were really good guys, they would be getting us all out into the stars. They would be funding space exploration programs They'd be putting money into bases on the moon and on Mars and on other planets. You know, whatever. I know it's going to take time to get out there, but they would be financing these endeavors. Because I believe that the planet, I mean, we do have six, nearly seven billion people on the planet right now. And that's, that's a huge chunk of people. And maybe not at the moment. You know, maybe, maybe we still have some breathing room left. On, on this planet. Maybe there's still enough food and water to go around for everybody. But eventually, if we continue down this course, it's going to get to the point where we're going to run out of room. I mean, the, the, the planet is not infinite in its size. 
I mean, you look at it compared to uh, Jupiter, to Saturn, to the sun. Eventually, if, if we go along this path where we continue to uh, grow in population, yeah, we are going to run out of room. Maybe not right now, but down the road we are. And if the power elite, if they had real intentions of doing good, well, what, what's the best thing to do? A, uh, depopulate the planet by killing off the majority of us, except for 500 million, or, or relocation, moving from one place to another, moving from Earth to the moon, colonizing the moon, setting up bases, self-sufficient bases on the moon, then moving on to Mars and setting up you know, cities on Mars, dome cities you know, that are just as sufficient as the bases on the moon. I mean, we are getting better with this self-sufficient technology, getting off the grid, you know, free energy, uh, recycling, all this other stuff. And yet we still have a long ways to go in that regard before we, we get to the point where we, we have real mastery. I mean, we still have a, a lot of technology to, to learn and to improve upon. But that, that's, that would happen, I think, a lot quicker if we were in a situation where we had to be innovative, where we had to be under pressure, under the gun. And what better way than actually out there on a moon base, out there on Mars, out there traveling in the stars, building bigger ships with better engines and better efficiency and all that other stuff. But no, they don't want to spend a dime on that, on on us getting out there. They want to get out there eventually. That's their ambition, their transhumanism, and you know their their technology. And, and you know that's talked about a lot in Alex Jones's Endgame. But at the same time, if they had any real intentions of doing good for humanity in general, they would be funding space programs left and right. We'd have a huge space program here in the UK and throughout the rest of the world. But they don't want to do that. No, they just want to take over the world and they want to depopulate the planet and institute their oppression and tyranny over us all. And that, in my opinion, that makes them evil. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is July 21st, 2011. James Burns hanging out with you this afternoon, and my dad, Kerry Burns, from the Cannabis Corner, a weekly web show, which you can check out online at youtube.com. Cannabis Corner is the channel. He also has a website, cannabiscorner.us. He's popping in for a few minutes to say hello to you all. He hasn't been here for a couple weeks, been off doing a couple other things, helping uh, one of my uh, sisters uh, relocate back to Texas for dental school. Yeah, down to Houston. Yeah, but uh, she's got it. Her apartment's nice that she got. <clears throat> it's in a nice area. Yeah. Got a grocery store in Target right around the corner. Now she's there is about shopping. She has yeah. all those conveniences. So, mm-hmm. But she's set in a pretty good spot. And yeah. uh, right there by kind of in that area where Rice University and about a mile from the medical center where the yeah. school is. And, and uh, speaking of Houston, since uh, we were talking about this a moment ago for the break, uh, Houston is, you know, one of those you know, one of the things that people think about Houston is the space program. Yeah, NASA, yeah. Yes, you know, that in Florida. And you, you were alive when they landed on the moon or supposedly landed on the moon. What, what was your, because I've never really asked you this before, what, what was going through your, your mind? Because I, I don't know if you had a chance to watch it back then, back in 1969. Oh, yeah, I saw it happen live. But <clears throat> I'll tell you a couple of things. But, of course, leading up to it, you know, there was always this Russia versus United States. Who's going to get there first and mm-hmm. all that? Of course, Russia did a few things first. Sputnik. And then Sputnik, and we had failed. But So it, it, was a, it was a time when it did happen that Americans were, you know, they were really feeling good about that because we, we had the, we, we set a goal. John Kennedy set the goal, and they got the funds. They funded it, and they went to the moon. I thought it was really important that we went there. Of course, we had subsequent missions that went there. And all that, but what was so strange was the ha- the the feelings of the people on the street, and there were a lot of African Americans and and whites alike that didn't believe that we actually went to the moon. They thought that whole thing was staged, mm-hmm. and I guess for pretty good reason because nobody had ever been there. Yeah, and there, you know, it was just tough. To, 
of course, looking at it on the screen and all, you got to just take it for what it is. You, you assume that they're on the moon. I mean, mm-hmm. it did look like the desert out in Arizona in yeah. places, but, but, you know, but I think the fact that it was new territory and nobody had ever been there and you really didn't know what to expect and all, it was sort of give and take. Some people that, I think the people that were educated a lot more in the science and stuff and understood the physics of it and all, I think they believed it was doable, impossible. Of course, we had been leading up to it with all the missions before that, but there were still just so many people, and probably to this day, too, that probably don't even believe. One of the things they do throw out now is, okay, if we could go up there 40 years ago, yeah. how come we haven't and, been back? And that's something you know? I just talked about a moment ago, is the fact that we have you know, advanced leaps and bounds you know, technology-wise compared to back then. Right. Uh, what, what happened? What, what, what transpired from that moment in 1969 where we, we supposedly landed on the moon and and i kind of go back and forth because i've watched several documentaries on on people that believe that you know it was faked but at the same time i also have to ask the question well if it was faked then why did why they do it only one time yeah why they why they go back a couple other times right and and i i that's that's the validity of it and i and i'm sure i'm sorry if people that do doubt that that was because that was an important but i think it's healthy to do it i think it's healthy yeah. to question things well sure sure but and, it also it all, but it adds there was, there was no physical proof i yeah. mean other than well, the moon well, rocks yeah, <laughs> but, well i mean those could have been made too but, yeah that's true but uh, i think that it it really just was based on at the time your position it it whether you were a scientific minded person whether you were educated mm-hmm. whether you had been following the space program certainly a, there were you know, people, engineers and stuff that were, of course, they never doubted the, mm. you know, and look at the things that they did without the computers that we have today. And all. I, know, I mean, man. it's just amazing that they, that they really pulled that off. If Because it was, you look in NASA during all that was going on, they didn't have calculators. They were working slide rules. I and I mean, doing complex equations <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, uh-huh. this isn't something, you know, that's why this thing's shooting out across, <laughs> you, know, you know, the solar system, I mean, yeah. the space. So, yeah. It was pretty remarkable, really. And it, and I guess part of that was lean to the doubt, too, of people. They just couldn't. How could you do something like that? But, you know, they just didn't understand physics, and they didn't understand. And I think, but I really do believe that the space station uh, was the reason why we haven't made a lot of more trips to the moon, and, and also to the Hubble telescope. Because, really, I think what we have learned from the Hubble telescope has put us light years ahead of anything that we would have garnished other than colonizing the moon, maybe setting that up. But but what the Hubble telescope has told us about the universe and, and our solar system and all the solar system beyond us is really light years of advancement versus this trip to the moon that we made and, and what came of it. I I I think probably colonizing the moon is a is a probably a you know something that could be done, but really it's unnecessary because we have a much better place here on Earth. You see what I mean? And there really is no threat to Earth. If there's a threat to Earth, it, there's a bigger threat to the moon because it's locked into our gravity. Yeah. Something happens to us, the moon's going to be the first thing to go, you know? So, mm-hmm. and I really don't see the, I mean, I see world population, where our populations are growing and all, but I do believe that at some point in time, uh, it's starting to start going the other direction. Other way that be by man's intervention by only allowing the powers you know, of China's only allowing you know one child, and yeah. of course they are in India. I think probably is going to be start doing that and all because, but you have the religious aspects of abortion that come into play. The laws of abortion, mm-hmm. a lot of countries. I mean, and then there are countries around the world that encourage the women yeah. to get pregnant. So. Yeah, see, there's a lot of people out there that says that the population in the West is declining. But obviously, they're not in my family because I have, what, three cousins right now. Right, all pregnant. With <laughs> yeah. their second child. Right. And let's see, I have, a, let's see, a, I think a, a friend of mine who also has a second child on the way. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it doesn't, I don't think that their population is slowing down. In, in, and particularly when you look at these, the Spanish community south of the border yeah. and then also the Spanish people here, they're, you know, they're the average uh, children in most Spanish families are here in the United States is five. Yeah. And uh, for whites, it's between two and three, yeah. I think. And I, and I think that's where the numbers tie into, is right. that the, the white population is decreasing. Yes, and the black population, I think, is holding its own. Uh, they've, yeah. they've, they've somewhat had, yeah. 
you know, uh, usually fairly large, but I don't think they've been as, hard, yeah. as high as the Spanish. But, yeah. of course, you have isolated cases where, and we did too when we were growing. Of course, our family was big. but Catholic. Catholics, <laughs> but, uh, and, and they yeah. really didn't know a lot about birth control if they even had any back then other than abstinence. So, of course, abstinence is the that biggest joke. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that doesn't exactly work when it comes to hormones and, right. and whatever. And the male testosterone-induced. Yeah. Well, driven population that wants to make love to women. I mean, yeah, well, or whatever. But yeah, but I mean, it's just it's just a like we're thing. a sex charged society too. Well, I mean, I mean, as as animals in general, I mean, you see that that's something that you that happens in every single species on right. the planet. They that's populate, right. repopulate, grow in size and fluctuate. That's right. But I, I do honestly believe that if we're not at that point now, eventually we're going to get to the point where we're just going to run out of room. Because well, I, I, we, we we don't have an unlimited amount of land and and food well, and materials. We do have though. We do have tremendous death going on around the world though. I mean, we are, we we are yeah, that's staying sad slightly. Reality. But you know, this Africa with the HIV deaths, and then we have this tremendous amount of uh, starvation that's going on, and and then we don't really know about in some of these places really how many of these dictators are killing people and, and we don't yeah. even know the well, numbers and not even to mention how many people we've killed well yeah and the, the, and the, forget and the, the quote, wars quote, we've killed yeah the war on terror right and the I mean, war on they, yeah, how about the war on drugs how many yeah. people have died from that yeah, most mean, situations like the war on terror for example uh, they speculate between hundreds of thousands if not millions of people have been killed in Iraq and Afghanistan not to mention Pakistan and they already are saying that we've already went over a thousand in Libya. Well, look at Vietnam. Look yep. at I mean, look at how many people perished in Vietnam. Yeah. Just American well, soldiers. Yeah, and we, then they they talk a lot about quarter of a million, you know, yeah. Vietnamese that perished. I know they never. That's funny because we always mention well the fifty nine thousand sixty two include, yeah, yeah sixty two including your brother right. who died, but we never mention the other side. No, we don't, and that's sad because if if you if you remember those famous photos of those helicopters, the, the last one taken off, and those mm -hmm. people. They were just, I mean, it was so heavy it hardly got off the top of that yeah. roof. All of those people that were left behind were slaughtered because the North Vietnamese were moving yeah. in. Yeah. And that's countless, untold hundreds of thousands of people that perished that we don't even have a count of. And, 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 and it's not just at the North Vietnamese hand. You also have to have look at during the war, right. the amount of people we killed, yeah. the villages we leveled and, and napalmed. And, and I also, too, think that I always said the smallest things on the planet – are, are, are going to bring about the greatest amount of death, and they, they, they have in the past. And I, I believe that we are prone in the future to some sort of black plague type of, of outbreak because of the level of antibiotics that have been being prescribed to people around the world. And that we, have, we're, we, ha, we have this whole time been building these bacteria and these viruses that are immune to anything we have that can kill them. Mm -hmm. And so once those learn how to populate and really get widespread, yeah. we're not going to – we're going to be defenseless. And I, I do well, believe that that's going to be a massive genocide. The, the sad itself. reality is this, that's being done by design. That, yeah. the vaccines, right. the, the GM crops. Well, unfortunately, though, they are going, that's one that will bite them in the you-know-what because they, they will not be immune to it either. Uh, the only people who will escape it are those who haven't been taking those types of things. Well, chances are they haven't been taking them because they know what's in a right. uh, vaccine. Well, hopefully they, know they what's... haven't. But I don't well, take, I, you know, I, there's a lot of people like me that don't take stuff I, like that. I know, but there's, there's, there's smart people Yourself, out there. Yeah. yeah. And you, you build a natural immunity. So we will, even though it but, may, us, may knock us to our knees, but I think we'll have a better chance of being able to fight something like that yeah. than a lot of these people who with weakened immune systems. But see, what... what uh, Bill Gates, Al Gore, uh, Ted Turner, and so many of these other cronies are proposing is basically massive genocide. Right. And a lot of people don't think about that. By design. They're yeah. not using guns and bullets and mm -hmm. bombs. They're using vaccines and all these other prescription drugs. Sure. And, it, and that's just as, as much of a crime, in my opinion, as invading another country and I, bombing people. I think, that, I think that there's a level of child abuse in this country where we and physicians and stuff, they, they prescribe medicines and things and antibiotics too much. I mean, and we, and we do, it, and we, it's, not, it's a known fact that the longer and more you take those things, the weaker your immune system is. And you're going to either have a short life or you're going to have a life when you get past your 40s, you're going to have a lot of problems, health issues, that, that, you're, that there isn't any medical out there that's going to be able to help you. That's true. And you will be in an early grave because of it.
uh, the, our immune system that we have in our body is our only chance of, of surviving anything out there, whether it's going to be some contamination from some food source, from some health risk like bacteria or viruses, or food poisoning, or, or, or a whole host of other things that could happen. Your immune system is really, your, it's like your, your backup defense. And if you, don't have, if you have a weak one, guess what? You're going to fall to the wayside. And, and we haven't seen the types of things like they saw back in the, with the Black Plague and that type of thing yeah. in, on any level. Where, the huge difference there mm-hmm. is, well, yeah, people did die in, during the Black Death. Also, people became immune. Well, there weren't as many people either, but if yeah. you look at the percentages yeah. of, that were dying, it was just tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. But the people that survived the Black Death, they were stronger for it. Sure. And, you know, it's unfortunate that people die in situations like natural disasters mm-hmm. and disease outbreaks. But those that survive, they have a stronger immunity, like you were saying. But what the powers that be are doing is they're trying to um, knock us off that well, level. True. Not only, not only by this abusive, of what I call abusive prescription drug prescribing, but also in the food. I mean, look at the amount of foods where the, if, if the foods aren't grown properly, if they're grown with a lot of toxicity, if they're grown with a lot of fur, they're, the proteins in those foods and stuff, they're not near what you get like we used to get or, or what you would still be able to get growing organic. And, and people really got to wake up to this. You better start saving heirloom seeds, seeds that you know are going to produce stuff that you can, because if you're... If you're depending on hybridized stuff that they that they sell out there hand over fist to be your seed source, guess what? You're going to starve to death because you're not going to be able to get enough of that seed to grow to produce anything. Mm-hmm. And that that seems like a small thing right now, but as as things get bad, and they probably will, this may be your only this may be your last link of survival. And yeah. and the people who buy and eat all the crap, they're just going to be get there quicker. I mean, it's going to and. There's plenty of evidence out there, you know, thanks to the, you know, a lot of researchers and the World Wide Web that proves that, you know, crops that are, you know, laced with chemicals and pesticides and uh, GMO plants, you know, by Mon- Monsanto and the rest of the food industry are bad for you. They're Long-term bad. health hazards. They're bad for you. And then the effluents that run off from those things, what they do to the soil and how they get into the water table and all, it, it's, a, it's a damaging effect. It seems like, like one drop of water of some of this won't matter. But when you look at how far that drop of water travels and, and what it taints as it goes, and it does, it's tremendous. And then you look at a, you know, a, a tremendous amount of it, what that must do. Yes, it, it is killing us on every level. And I don't... <laughs> Even people who have whales and stuff that say, "Hey, this is good whales and all that," those are all subject to being tainted with just this this uh, ground surge of, li- of liquid. Yeah, and active transport in the soil. It's how stuff moves around, and it it carries the unfortunately it carries the dangerous chemicals right along with the good stuff. So yeah, and the, these food industries, these big giant corporations, they're allowed to keep doing it and doing it over and over again, and there's no need for it. They're the really spraying. If, if you would just not do that, you really, you can grow crops. But, see, I'm convinced that they do all this by design. Oh, I think so. I, I think that they're doing it with the intent of, of developing cancers in people, getting people sicker, and it's just another well, it form is, and fashion. It, it is part of what yeah. – it's part of that toxic load, yeah. and that's what people got to understand. It's what you take in, and it's not just the food. Yeah. L- ladies, perfumes, all that. Yeah, and the list goes on and on. Kerry Burns is my guest. His website, CannabisCorner.us. You're listening to Freedom Files right here on American Freedom Radio. Rolling into the final segment this afternoon. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday, July 21st, 2011. I am James Burns, your host. While you're uh, online surfing the World Wide Web, be sure and check out FreedomFiles.us. And, of course, CannabisCorner.us. Speaking of Cannabis Corner, uh, joined once again by my dad, Kerry Burns, the host of the Cannabis Corner. And you may have to start a new show yeah, called Walnut Corner or, or, or something. Or if, it's, if it helps you improve your health corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I came across this article, and I, I just can't believe it. But actually, I, I shouldn't be too shocked because this is the direction our, our government has been going for too long now. Uh, from uh, the New American, Walnuts are drugs, says the FDA. And uh, Diamond Foods uh, have, has been making the truthful claims about the health benefits of consuming walnuts 
And now the FDA uh, doesn't exactly like that too much. So they sent a letter to uh, Diamond Foods declaring, quote unquote, your walnut products are drugs and, quote unquote, new drugs at that. And therefore, quote unquote, they may not legally be marketed in the United States without an improved drug application. And th they went further. The agency even threatened Diamond with seizure if they failed to comply. And this is a company they're going after, not not just you, little you and me, you know, John Q. Publix. Right. They're going after a company. It's just insane. I tell you, it's just insane. Well, well, did you hear the one the other day about the French fries? No, I didn't. Yeah. They said that the French fries had uh, certain chemicals in the French fries. The reason that we like to eat French fries is be and the reason we like to smoke marijuana is because these of these two chemicals that are not only in french fries but they're also in marijuana they were right. others they were trying to make the connection between french fries and marijuana yeah, well and and i say well of the two i would choose the marijuana because it's certainly way healthier yeah, than the true. french fries now if you bake the fries or mm -hmm. or something like that maybe they would be good but what what is it's just part of this control it's part of this hey if I can't get you on one level, I'll get you on another. This walnuts is a perfect example. Now we're going to declare probably pistachios, like you said, probably oranges and apples are and on the peanuts list, peaches, and, peanuts, uh, you name it. Uh, I mean, it's all going to happen, and they'll they'll use this same form. Oh, no, those are healthy drugs for you, and you, and you have to have a drug application to, to market those. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's just insane. They're herbs. They're food. They're you know, things that are on this planet that grow in the form of plants, and I don't think there ought to be a law against any plant. Yeah, I mean, it's a plant. It's a plant. Yeah. And, the, and most of these things that they're chasing after are nothing more than herbaceous herbs. Yeah. Most of them have extreme benefit. Yeah. And it, we just have this insane group that's still stuck in reefer madness days of mm -hmm. the 30s, and, our, and they rule our Congress. You know, I don't, and, honestly, this is my belief. You know, Mitch McConnell was yeah. one of those who wanted got $10 million for his state yeah. so they could fly around looking for marijuana mm -hmm. plants. Why not throw well, that into the kitty? Well, Mitch McConnell also thinks that the president should have an executive order to take care of the debt ceiling. You know, but, of course, he was doing it sarcastically because he, he was like, oh, he can assume the responsibility and the blame. But, I mean, okay, if you're going to let him you know, be in charge of the debt ceiling, what's the point in having you bastards in the, the Capitol building? Let's just exactly. turn it into a museum, you know, really? about the republic we want. And have. whatever Obama wants to do, just yeah. let him do it. Yeah, just yeah. let him do it. Yeah. I mean, why don't, you, why don't you run up the debt to where we're borrowing 85 cents of every dollar yeah. we spent? Why not? Yeah. The, the first 42 cents that we borrowed, I mean, all that got us there, what good did that do us? Yeah. And uh, speaking of another uh, critter, uh, Dick Durbin. Oh, God. Uh, this guy uh, it wants to go after supplements. So not only are they going after uh, marijuana and uh, walnuts now and uh, organic and small gardens and farmer's markets, now they want to go after supplements. And I know a lot of people, including myself, that take supplements. I take turmeric. I take krill oil. And they want, to, they want to go after it because, well, surprise, surprise, guess who is putting money in their pockets? Oh, big, big Pharma? Big Pharma, yeah, maybe? Yeah, Big Pharma. Yeah. Surprise. Oh, boy. And so, once again, you know, the corporations are the ones really running the show. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just so glad that there are people out there that are so concerned about my health that they want to tell me what I should be putting in my mm -hmm. body for my health. Because I haven't been able to figure it out yet. I'm only 57 years old, and I've been doing it for my whole life. And so I, I really do appreciate the people thinking that they know more about what should go in my body than me. Yeah, It's es amazing. Especially a Congress critter. Especially a Congress critter that doesn't even know my name. <laughs> and chances are, I don't, I don't know, is Durbin, I think I'm willing to Can bet. Can even spell organic? Yeah. I'm willing to bet that Durbin is probably a lawyer. And does do lawyers know exactly about supplements? Did you take biology 101? See, That's Dick what I want to know. Durbin, what is your profession besides being a crony? Uh, let's see, what what did he do? Um, yep, yep, he graduated from Georgetown University oh, Law that, Center. Geez, of course, surprise, surprise. Another lawyer. I mean, there are some good lawyers out there like yeah. Tom Cryer. But, but they never took real, biology real, 101. I mean, wait a minute. Does, does a lawyer really need to be telling us what we need to be putting in our bodies? Yeah. I mean, do they, are, they, are they exactly the experts? That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. did, did he have a food science minor or <laughs> what? I mean, it just, it, it's insane. It is absolutely insane, yeah. any of this, that, that, that anybody can tell anybody what they put in their mm -hmm. body. That's just crazy. Yeah. That's insane. That you should, and also, too, if you choose a path, say, an organic farmer wants to produce their own organic vegetables, 
because you know they're healthier and they're going to be good, better for you. And then, no, we don't like that. We're going to come up with a law that outlaws that. I mean, really? That's about as stupid I mean, as outlawing marijuana. Well, that's the direction we're heading, though. I mean, you look at S-510, that's, which I talked about in great detail last at the what November last year when they were really trying to push it through. Right. They unfortunately passed it. I mean, it gave the FDA broad powers. It it had nothing to do with going after big food industry. Big food industry were the supporters. Right. And, it, it, and it, how about all the poisons they're putting out? Yeah. Nobody cares about that. No, they don't. Yeah. The, the entire focus of S-510 was to go after small organic growers yes. and, and backyard farmers and farmers markets. They, they fear, so feared that competition, you know, that they have to go, make a law. It's just it's same as the, it's the same as what they did with the cannabis back in the 30s. They so feared the hemp industry that they had to get rid of it because it just wasn't in the plan for them making money. Yeah, and that's, DuPont and DuPont, the others. All of them. I mean, it, the story is, is tall and wide, let me tell you, and it's all true. And... And the fact that the American people have just stood back and allowed this government to hijack our our plants now. I mm-hmm. mean, we're now we're now we can't grow a garden. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, make the false assumption that we live in a capitalist society. No, we we live in a corporatist society. Yeah. I mean, if we lived in a, in a true capitalist society with free markets, uh, we would be allowed to buy whatever the hell we wanted. We'd be allowed to have organic food and well, this and that. Say, why are, the, the medical field's so arrogant? These doctors, are, how are they? How are they to know what, what they want to tell me to do that I should do is is better for me than what I already know that I've been practicing my whole life? Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to go to a doctor, that's your prerogative. That's your prerogative. But at the same time, if you choose to do the research yourself and to you know go a more organic how about lifestyle, just try to stay healthy. Yeah, you know, exercise, eat right, yeah. try to eat right, try to get some exercise, try to. Try to actually avoid things out there like toxins that will cause bad health. It, it's not that hard. Don't abuse things in, in excess. It's, not, it's okay to drink a little alcohol. It's okay to smoke some weed. It's okay probably to shoot a little heroin. But well, don't do things in excess. That's where you get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not a supporter of people using hard drugs. But I'm at not the same time, At the same time, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, you should be allowed to do whatever the hell you but want to do. But you've got the two hardest ones legal that they don't yeah. care nothing about. Of so why give a worry about anything else? No, I'm not worried yeah. about it. I'm just saying that I would never, even if it was legal, I would never oh, do no. any of that stuff. No, I don't, I, I just I don't lo- think it's healthy for people to shoot heroin, but I don't think that it's right for people to go to jail if they've no, it, that's that. wrong. They should, they it's should It's absolutely to- wrong, and they should have a right to, to use, to smoke marijuana, to drink Coca-Cola, or to snort coke, or, or to eat fat foods, anything, or anything they want. And that, see, that's part of the problem. Not only do you have a, the you know the the uh, big pharma involved in this, because you know they're they're trying to you know bring out Marinol and all that crap. You also have the prison industrial complex. They're making money off the drug war, mm-hmm. off of these nonviolent drug offenders. Look because, at Homeland Security. Yeah, I mean, my God, uh, that, 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 that if people. <laughs> Jesus Christ, two hundred billion dollars right there that we could save right off yeah. the bat if we just did away with that that but, entity and the drug enforcement and agency. It's obvious that neither party cares about trimming the fat. No, because they're not going to. They're going to raise the debt. They're going to raise taxes. And you watch those shows, the border wars, where they're, they're yeah. this Homeland Security supposedly it's about stopping the illegal aliens. They don't stop any illegal. It's about stopping marijuana. That's mm-hmm. all it's about. Yeah. Every bit of it. It's about stopping yeah. marijuana. And see, it's about stopping the marijuana that they're not paid to allow to come into right. the country. Exactly. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, they're not making the... Yeah, yeah, they're not getting their cut, so they're going to do everything they can and to the stop the And the fact that we're cup. so caught up on the marijuana <laughs> and we don't even think about how much revenue the hemp industry would bring yeah, in. No. Just, that's how stupid... And, and, and like that one congressman said, they're stuck in the reefer madness mode of the 30s, and they are. Yeah. They, they, they are stuck in a big lie, mm-hmm. and they're still propagating a big wow. lie. Well, I, I don't think it's they're stuck in a lie. They know exactly what they're doing. They're being paid off by these corporatist elite bastards. Yeah. And they're going to keep doing it. they still have to it. propagate the lie to the public. Oh, of course they do. Yeah. It's propaganda. It's yeah. nothing new. we got about a minute left. Uh, what is coming up on the Cannabis Corner? We're going to do part three of the uh, Grow, Grow, Grow series. This will be the final part of that. And uh, appreciate all the views that people are watching. And we'll wrap it up with this one. And then next week we'll be on to another subject. Yeah. I noticed because you were off last week that people were complaining like, hey, where's a new episode? <laughs> hey, we want more Cannabis Corner. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, and also, be sure and check out the website, CannabisCorner.us. I understand you're going to start posting some articles on there soon. Right. We're going to start putting up some uh, written articles and stuff, things that, that I wrote 40 years ago 
that are still current today. And that's, that's what blows my mind. It's th- things that I was writing about 40 years ago. You could write the article today, and it would be just as current today. It's just amazing. But nothing's changed. Yeah. And it's continued to get worse and worse, and it's very obvious that the powers that be within our government and beyond aren't listening to the people. But eventually, you know, just like JFK said, I said this a couple of days ago at the end of the show, you know, you know, he warned about this. If, if you make peaceful revolution impossible, you make violent revolution inevitable. That's right. So be sure and check out CanvasCorner.us as well as FreedomFiles.us. We are out of here. I'll be back live tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central, Friday afternoon, right here on Freedom Files.